Okay, so today's project is to try to figure out what's going on with my brakes. When I step on the pedal, the pedal sort of kicks back a little bit, and I can watch the stoplight switch not engage. I can feel the front brakes catching, and then if I step a little bit farther, I'll see the rear brakes come on, or I'll feel them come on, and the stoplight switch will come on, which operates off the relay valve in the back uh, area where the rear axle is against the bulkhead there. So there's probably something going on with this valve, and I got a new one from Luke at US Coach, and it looks kind of like that, and sits there underneath of the treadle. And so today, we're going to see if we can replace this and whether or not it will make any difference in our performance. So I checked the lines before I did this. I um, disconnected them to make sure that everything looked like it was clear and free and ran air from the front to the back through the quarter inch line that goes to the relay valve and that seemed to be clear. So let's, and if it weren't clear by the way, the it seems to me that if the pressure is going in from this valve through the line to the back and it's not activating the brake light switch which is in a T that goes into the fitting that goes into the valve. So if the air is getting to the T um, then the light would come on. So I'm seeing delay there. So anyway, we're going to try to figure out what's going on here so that we're not operating in less than ideal mechanical condition. Okay, so this is what it looks like from underneath the driver's compartment, underneath the driver's seat in the compartment in the front left corner. And that's the bottom of the brake application valve, the treadle valve. And the line coming in at the bottom is the air supply line. This line coming out on the left side toward us is the line that goes to the front brakes. And then the quarter inch line over here is the line that goes to the back to the relay valve. And for some reason, this line is getting air, but this line isn't on the initial quarter inch of application. And so I don't know why that would be because both of those lines go to the same compartment inside the valve there. So I can't really figure out why it's doing that. Seems to me if one gets air, the other should get air. But who knows? We'll see. All right, so the first step, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm feeling my way through this, but the first step is to take the pedal off. It's just a cotter pin and a pin that goes through here that the pedal rocks on. And then you can pull this plunger off of here. Um, well, I said you could. Maybe I can do it better with my right hand. There you go. Anyway, so it leaves you with this plunger and the boot. They're like that. And that's the first step. Okay, so I think you can just take these two bolts out and then there's a plate that bolts onto the top of the valve that that bolts onto. At least that's the way it looks. Anyway, I wanted to take this thing off of here and clean it. So I decided I would take the three bolts that hold it to the floor, through the plywood floor, take those out and just pull out the whole assembly. So there's the old one. You can see the two big bolts go through here there's this plate on here, and then I think there's three bolts that go from the middle plate there into the valve, and that's what holds it on. So you could get by with just taking these two bolts out. They're just threaded anyway, so you can do it from one side. You don't have to go back and forth like I did to take the nuts off. But I, like I said, I wanted to do that to clean everything up here because, you know, it's been in there for as long as I've owned the bus for over 35 years, and then how many years before that, I don't know. And these fittings here are really tight. Like I tried like crazy to get that one off because I wasn't sure it would pull through. And uh, fortunately it did, but I could not get that off inside the compartment down there. So um, if worse had come to worse, I would have just taken the two bolts off and dropped it down. But this way I don't have to drop it and it works out better. So anyway, that's, that's kind of like the next step. 
So one of the things I'm going to do while I'm in here is I'm going to clean this compartment out because it's always been something I wanted to do. I never have and everything that's in here has been in here for 35 years and longer. I'm sure nobody else has ever cleaned it out. But here's the thing. So this is the supply line from the air tank. And this valve here used to be a check valve that was part of the ICC brake, which was a hand brake, had an uh, air valve inside, the driver could flip over and it would apply the rear brakes using air pressure from the system. And there was a loop here that went from this valve to another valve somewhere in here, you know, over here somewhere, I think. And anyhow, so when you take that uh, hand brake out and put in maxi brakes like I did, you take these tubes off of here. So I left this, this valve in here, it's a check valve. I left that in there uh, because basically it's just designed to let the air flow through. Well, I just discovered something interesting. I wanted to make sure, because when I took this line off, and this is, a supply, this is the supply line that goes up to the treadle valve. We don't have the valve in right now, but anyway, uh, I took the line off and it was had a lot of oil and stuff in it, so I cleaned it out. I'm going to put it back on. And I wanted to make sure that the... Um, I have an automatic spitter on the on the, the wet tank and the dry tank so that you know every time the air pressure builds up in the wet tank it's it and the compressor pops on or pops off it's it spits out actually in the dry tank and then the wet tank every five minutes it spits out a little bit of water and whatever and it just does that it's heated and so it should keep it you know dry in the winter time well anyway I had a feeling maybe there was getting uh, there was water accumulating in there and the valve wasn't working properly so I was gonna drain it well there shouldn't be any pressure on the tank because the air should be flowing through here to the brake valve you know freely but what I discovered is that there's pressure in the tank in fact it seems like there's quite a bit of pressure in the tank and it's been sitting there for I don't know a week or longer maybe longer than that maybe a couple of weeks and so there's pressure in the number two tank the dry tank which is where your brakes are, your pressure from your service for your service brakes comes from, and so there's a blockage here someplace that's creating, um, you know, the, the pressure in the tank and no air to flow out of here. Because theoretically, once you take this off, this thing ought to just flow free until that tank is empty. So next thing I'm going to do is take this off and see what the heck is going on because this is not a good situation in fact if i had any idea that this was perhaps what was causing my problem um i would have never driven the bus like that so i guess it's good to find out before something bad happens all right so i got it out of there this is what we're after is this thing we're going to take that apart and see what's wrong with it anyway that's the line from the air tank right there this is the line to the parking brake this is the line to the auxiliary system and uh, over there is the low pressure switch for the um, air um, air buzzers the warning low low air warning light anyhow so we're going to take this apart and clean it up see what's going on inside there i'm probably going to just take the guts out of the thing and let it go because um, I'm not sure what's causing the blockage. It wasn't a lot of air that came out of there, but there was enough to make me a little concerned about it. So we're going to just take it out. So I've taken out the valves that we talked about, that, were, that one valve that was in there in this line. I took this whole line out so I could get in here and clean. And I couldn't get it off anyway without taking the whole thing off because it wouldn't come apart. So anyway, I, you know, this has been something that's bugged me for 35 years that I've owned this bus. This thing, this compartment in here has been filthy. It's full of sand and grit and nuts and bolts. I don't know where all this stuff came from or how it got in here. It's almost as if, you know, some rat dragged it in here or something, but it is just filthy. So I've determined that I'm going to be, or I'm determined to clean it is what I'm trying to say. And so anyway, uh, we've gotten the process started. I've shoveled out with this little makeshift spatula and a uh, putty knife, probably two cupfuls of dirt and sand and nuts and bolts and wires and cigarette um, match or matches and all kinds of things in here. So anyhow, um, this is the beginning 
and we've got everything disconnected as you can see I've got lines all over the place and uh, hopefully it'll be someplace you can eat off when we're done I wouldn't go that far well well the good news is it's like I thought it was there's an extra plate up there that has three screws through it that hold the body of the the valve body rather to the plate which bolts to the other plate that's above the floor anyhow the bad news is this is such old technology they use these old Phillips screws and they have them peened in so they won't turn which is going to make it really hard to get those off of there anyway fun and games so this is the plunger that goes underneath the accelerator and the accelerator goes down on this and pushes this down as a little ball, a little roller bearing, or a little roller, it's here somewhere, here it is, this little roller that um, is underneath the accelerator pedal. And anyway, I wanted to show you this because I thought it was kind of interesting. The original color of the bus inside was green and darn if some of that green paint isn't still on that plunger. 60 years old. Hard to believe. When it was the first, no, it's not the first time, but anyway, interesting. To me, anyway. All right, before putting this back in the bus, I wanted to take a second to show you this valve. Uh, and this is what, part of what my concern was about. So the air supply comes from the secondary tank or the dry tank in through this way. You can see the arrows. It goes out this way and then from here it goes to the foot the treadle valve the foot valve and when i was taking it apart there was pressure on this side not on this side and i wasn't really sure if it was supposed to be like that so what's inside of here is a diaphragm that sits in there like this and this little plunger that sits on top of it and when you turn the icc brake on which it doesn't have anymore and the icc brake was a brake that would apply the rear brakes with a hand control valve up by the driver's seat. As long as there was air pressure, the brakes were applied, which is the opposite of maxi brakes, uh, which operate on a spring brake system. And so there was an airline that came in to the top of this valve, and when you would turn the ICC brake on, it would charge this side of the valve and it would push the diaphragm down against the seat in here, preventing flow of air to the treadle valve, the foot valve, which I don't really understand, you know, why the why they have to do that. It seems like if you step on it and there's air and it, it doesn't make much difference, you know, if it's not going anywhere. Anyway, anyhow, they did it that way. And so this little guy sat on top of the diaphragm and would just push the diaphragm down when you would um, turn the, the hand valve on. So it had gotten to the point where it was trapping air back on this side of the valve. And I wasn't really sure whether, you know, at some point it might get to the point where it didn't allow air to flow through to the foot valve, which would be a real problem. So anyhow, I've taken the diaphragm and the little plunger out uh, just to be safe in case air got to the other side of it and caused it to seat and wouldn't allow it to open, preventing air to go going from the... Uh, tank to the foot valve. So now we don't have to worry about that. So before returning the old valve, I wanted to take it apart to see if I could see what was wrong with it. So this is the bottom of the valve and this base just screws in and you can unscrew it to get access to the valves on the inside. And there's a valve that looks kind of like a thermostat that is in there and you can see that the rubber seal around this that should be attached to it is broken which allows air to get through and I'm not sure if there's anything else going on in there that um, looks like I don't know if that's just water or oil rather well, water and oil anyway so that apparently is what's causing the problem now they rebuild these, and I don't know if you can just buy that and rebuild it. It's pretty simple to take apart. So that's how that side comes apart. Nothing to it really. And then I'll show you the other side here in a second. So 
So this is the top of the valve, and it just comes out like this. That's the part that gets depressed, and it pushes down inside there. It's retained with the plate. Normally this plate sits on top of it, and then that bolts to the floor, which has a plate on there, and has this huge spring in there. And basically there's two springs in here, and I'm not sure what the sequence is. This is a graduated spring here, and then it has this removable spring in here uh, and a couple of ports in there. And I, I really don't understand without thinking about it a little bit longer how this actually works. There's an O-ring at the bottom of this and there's a bigger O-ring in, in the center. Uh, probably those parts are pr probably easy to get um, and shouldn't be hard to replace. But that other one that I showed you on the bottom is the one that would be you know, specific to this that has sort of a a seal type edge on it where it, it pushes against the walls and keeps the air from coming out kind of like a, a seal on a, a um, brake cylinder would would work anyway um, so that's basically all there is to it you know if you can get the parts you could rebuild this yourself not that big of a deal so I'm getting everything painted up and cleaned up this is our valve just have the fittings cleaned up I still have that one to clean up and we got new screws they were Phillips screws and we got these now with Allen screws in them tapered got those at Fastenal anybody needs any of those things get in touch with me because I had to buy a box of them for three a box of 100 27 dollars so that's what um, nine dollars a screw darn expensive huh Anyway, you can't do it right if you don't spend a little money. Uh, and we're getting other things painted up, like the base plate for the pedal mount. And took the roller off the pedal and painted the pedal. This is just stupid stuff, I know, but anyway. Trying to get it all cleaned up. Alright, so we've got it all cleaned up. The new valve with all the fittings on it and we're ready to put it away or put it <laughs> put it in the um, it, I'm sure glad I took pictures of this thing because I would have never remembered how this went back together and then I didn't get it right the first time because I reversed these two and then I realized that from the pictures so that would have been important Anyway, so I hope they're set up fairly close to where they are because they are really hard to move once they're in there. They are some kind of tight. All right, so this is probably one of the most unpleasant jobs I've ever done on this thing. It took me three days, probably 12 hours of crawling into this compartment to get it cleaned up. And I had no fun doing this whatsoever. Anyway, I have my new brake valve. Uh, installed, well I don't have it installed, I have it mounted and I have this one line put on. I put that line on first because it's kind of rigid and I wanted to be able to make sure I could thread it uh, while the valve was loose and then there's the bottom line which is the supply line that comes in from right there um, and it goes through a series of connections on the way and then there's uh, you know a couple of these quarter inch lines that have to get connected but anyhow it's a heck of a lot better than it was was it worth it I don't know I feel better about it but it was hours and hours worth of scraping and cleaning and it just was not fun and it's hard to get into this compartment all right so this is with everything hooked up now and just did a leak test on it I have one tiny little leak at the bottom of the air supply to the valve it's about a half inch bubble every 30 seconds and I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it right now or not. sometimes they fix themselves if you leave them a little while but it's not enough to worry about and that thing's really tight I don't want to over tighten it so we'll see but that's what it looks like when it's all put back together and clean sort of clean